Hello and welcome to your digital footprint roadmap for global trade presented to you via Digital Transformation Services, Go Journey Incorporated, your facilitator today, Melissa Hill, founder and CEO, uh, your global trade partner in West Virginia, Appalachia, and beyond. Uh, you'll see my trusted assistant here uh, helping us uh, through this presentation. Uh, and uh, let's get started with some digital impact facts. Uh, fact number one, Gartner in 2014, Gartner, IT thought leader, predicted by 2018, digital business will require 50% less business process workers. Business process workers are anyone that pushes F8 or enter uh, for something to transact and happen on down the line uh, from marketing, sales, product development, and on into distribution. 500% uh, more key digital business jobs uh, will be created. So we won't be at a, at a loss, but the job, the type of jobs will change. We see that happening now in 2020. Uh, AgPro in 2017 predicted both rural and urban areas can make progress toward eliminating poverty and achieving zero hunger goals um, outlined in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Um, and so this is about rural transformation. And we're rural. Lot, uh, many parts of West Virginia are both ur considered urban and rural. Uh, so we can also use this digital uh, piece to look at some of the issues we have and work to resolve some of those issues such as poverty, uh, which is a big win for all because we're only as strong as our weakest link. Uh, third, United Nations, their goal number nine in 2015 was to look at the fact that there are uh, that inadequate infrastructures will lead to a lack of access to markets, jobs, information, and training, uh, and doing business. Uh, you're business owners, so you need to evaluate. Do you have connectivity? Because without connectivity, you can't participate in what we call this fourth industrial revolution, uh, which is automation and robotics. Uh, it's not eliminated; it's changing the way we live learn, work, and engage in our communities. Uh, so an inadequate infrastructure, we see a lot of projects geared toward broadband, uh, now reskill and learning. Most people can't get to learning right now because they lack access to broadband. Broadband also hardware and software uh, to be able to engage in training, uh, to continue uh, to be uh, viable in the workforce, as well as being a viable business with developing products and services that people want to buy and they can buy from you. So our digital facts, just a few, there are so many out there, Gartner, AgPro, and United Nations, they're telling us that things was going to change from as early back as 2014. Gartner started their predictions, I think, in 2005, 2006. Driving all of this digital uh, would be compliance, as well as, of course, technology, looking at those compliance requirements and ensuring that they can uh, be executed, uh, they can be tracked, monitored, and controlled uh, to ensure uh, that uh, all businesses, corporations, go the government, agencies and even your small or medium business uh, can truly work within the guidelines required in your industry. All right, so let's look at this roadmap. This is not all inclusive. Um, there are definitely some things, some other things you're going to have to do, but at a minimum, our digital footprint roadmap that we present to you today involves uh, branding, uh, the actual digital footprint uh, that we'll talk about, uh, creating a press and media kit, as well as e-commerce, uh, import-export platforms, and then all of this leading up to funding. How will you fund? 
uh, and we'll talk about uh, different ways of funding. So our first pillar there is, and the first element is branding. Uh, branding is personal as well as business. Uh, it's best to also secure upfront your intellectual capital. Uh, that's trademarks, copyright, patents, anything that you've created that's yours. Uh, and you, uh, that goes through the federal government. Uh, there are agencies um, that uh, there's an agency that will help you uh, with um, submitting that paperwork or it shows you how. But in most cases for this intellectual crap. A capital piece, you're going to want to secure an attorney. And that attorney will charge you some fees. Uh, some of them are pretty expensive, but you want to make sure that uh, you understand the cost of securing is going to be minimal compared to uh, not securing your intellectual capital and someone else uh, doing that uh, on your behalf and making the money you could have made off your own product or service. Second, uh, your domain name. Uh, so your business name.com, your.com. Uh, you need this. This is how, one, people know that you're legit, um, you've invested, uh, but also that you've invested and you're in for the long haul. Uh, a lot of people are still using their Gmail account, you know, their business name at gmail.com. Uh, not good, especially if you are going to trade local, regional, national. Uh, or global, especially global. Uh, so you want to invest in a domain name, uh, also uh, leaking that uh, domain uh, to a website. Your business email is crucial too, uh, because um, you know that's part of uh, your branding. And then any content uh, associated with the domain, um, you know, being able to uh, download, view, listen. Uh, etc. Uh, all a part of branding. Your company identification number or prefix. Uh, in this document, I talked about uh, the GS1 company prefix, your ISBN numbers if uh, you're publishing or have documents um, that you're um, publishing and distributing, uh, selling, and then SKUs all a part of uh, your company identification. But more than anything, the, the uh, company index, your GS1 number, that's how they know that GoJourney is shipping something. GoJourney is selling something. Uh, so the front part of uh, your um, company identification numbers will include this set code um, that can be used uh, national as well as international. Your personal and business story. People love stories. They want to know why you're doing what you're doing. How did you get here? Uh, you know, uh, so your your story, you're writing it every day. So keep a journal. Start journaling about your personal as well as your business story. You know, did you work before you started doing this? Uh, did, you know, uh, did it happen out of, you know, a situation where there was a plight? Um, meaning right now, you know, we're all dealing with, COVID-19? Um, did you lose a job and then decide it's time for me to open my business? They want to hear the story. It draws them in. That's part of your branding. Uh, occupation and um, business portfolio. Examples of your work. Uh, a lot of times you'll work for a client and they don't want their example out there. Uh, so you want to make sure that before you post in your portfolio, uh, you have the permission of your client or you alter that particular uh, uh, content to where uh, the client's information and their proprietary uh, approach or format is, is not uh, revealed. Uh, but you have to create your personal um, occupational uh, portfolio uh, should represent uh, the work that you've done up until this time. Uh, to become the expert and open your own business. And then there's the business pitch. The business pitch uh, is tell us about your business. Uh, why should someone buy from you? Why should someone become your partner, uh, your supply chain partner? Uh, why should they contract with you? Uh, period. Why should they engage with you? Uh, you're going to use all this information to create a pitch 
to pull them in uh, to your brand. Uh, the second element um, of the footprint is the footprint. Uh, when you put your foot down, what does it look like? That includes your branding, which also includes colors. You know, coloring, colors, characters is a big part of it. Uh, your website. But within that website, um, there is uh, site optimization, your search engine optimization, just a few of the things. Uh, biggest uh, with this that's not documented here would be uh, your analytical tools that run on the back end uh, to integrate all of this and to track um, your um, customer engagement as well as, uh, you know, just uh, how well your ads are performing. So, uh, and, and, and your footprint is performing. So Google Analytics, uh, uh, AdWords uh, are a few of the things not mentioned here that you're going to need to. Uh, but that website has to have that search engine optimization to be able, it's going to go out and reach customers to pull them back in looking for your products and services. Uh, a client relationship management solution, CRM, um, it uh, is your customer service platform in a sense. Uh, it's exactly what it is and it integrates. Uh, that means that you can uh, put um, a piece of that on your website, on your social media, and so many different areas um, uh, to draw clients back to one database, uh, client relationship management, in which um, you're going to have enough information for clients uh, to determine if they want to engage and then if they want more information, they will ask via this client relationship management system. On your website, um, from the client relationship management solution and platform, you will have maybe a form, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep in touch or want more information uh, or a download. All of this comes through via your client relationship management system and uh, it pulls uh, from your website back in and the same with social media. So it's, it's called integration um, and there are ways to integrate these solutions into your website. Uh, and social media. Next in your footprint, you have a capability statement. Viewable, printable. What makes you capable to do what you say you're going to do? Develop products and services uh, to distribute and provide a quality product or service. Nobody wants to buy and have to ask for a refund. Uh, so your capability statement um, uh, you know, federal government specifically wants to see a capability statement with uh, your product and service definition and experience. You may have more than one capability statement, depending on how many products and services you're offering. Your collaboration platform. Collaboration platform is going to enable you to collaborate internally with your uh, employees, as well as internally with any supply chain partners, any partners that uh, provide you with uh, parts, products, services for you to deliver a whole uh, pro product or service to your clients. Uh, but it's also going to enable you to uh, collaborate external on special projects uh, as well as research and etc. Uh, uh, you can use these platforms. Uh, uh, some are via social media, some are via your cloud uh, solution. All of these are in the cloud now, I should say, too. Um, so your cloud solution should also enable you to collaborate um, and share information. And then there are trade platforms. There's so many different ones. Uh, definitely can't go into it uh, in this presentation. But trade platforms um, uh, are going to differ for each vendor that you work with uh, because they all have their own approach based on uh, federal, state, local industry regulations, as well as, you know, their, the way they want to do business based on their business model. Uh, so you're going to have to have a digital uh, product and service catalog. Um, and if you create one catalog, that enables you to engage on multiple different trade platforms. And that's how you uh, increase your your footprint in that not only are you on your own website, uh, you are on social media, uh, you're on uh, collaboration platforms. Someone may invite you into their cloud 
uh, to collaborate as a supply chain partner, et cetera, or vendor. Uh, but these trade platforms then exposes you to buyers, procurement, uh, but sometimes they also uh, share their information with uh, other uh, consumers uh, and companies that might need your products or services. Uh, so, you know, it's, um, uh, it is a good trade uh, or a good, uh, a good handoff to an opportunity to share uh, products and services, uh, vendors, supply chain, etc. But you want to be ready for that um, by having a digital catalog uh, ready to engage, or you have to create one for each platform in which you decide to trade on. Your press kit, press and media kit, this differs. It can be hard copy or brochure. Um, you know, just some high level information, but uh, it should be viewable, downloadable online. Uh, of course, it's going to include your branding, uh, where you're located as far as your digital footprint, social media, your website, email, etc. Uh, it's also going to include some advertisements, uh, you know, uh, photos of your leadership, some quotes, the bio of your founder team. Um, maybe some pictures of the inside and outside of your office. So if someone's looking for you, um, they'll know when they've arrived, um, as well as any campaigns, flyers, ads um, you might want to put on that press kit. But the press kit itself is just a high level of who you are, uh, where you are, how do they contact you, and the products and services um, that you are providing. Uh, next, e-commerce. Uh, your e-commerce platform is going to be crucial to staying in business. Uh, digital cloud e-commerce, all a part of moving towards um, a virtual uh, trade platform. Also, uh, a compliant as well as um, a trade that is uh, free of uh, any type of illegal uh, transactions. Um, you know, we still have this big underground and um, cash, money laundering, etc. So e-commerce as it uh, pertains to you and your business depends on you picking a platform such as Amazon, uh, Shopify, um, big commerce. There's all kinds of e-commerce platforms out there. So you need to decide which is best for you. Uh, some it used to be Shopify was, you know, basically for a lot of retail sales, uh, that type of market. Amazon, you know, has uh, gone from, you know, wholesale retail to now it is, uh, you know, we can even sell products and serv well, services on that platform. So all the platforms are expanding. But what you want to do is look at each of your customer segments and the channels in which they purchase to determine which e-commerce solution is going to be best for you. Um, an e-commerce solution uh, should also uh, contain, of course, your branding and everything, but it's about electronic trans, uh, transactions, but your product and service catalog pay, plays a big part. It's the front end and how you transact is the e-commerce piece. Uh, all content should enable you to use your links back to one system if possible. Uh, all your vendors are going to have unique trade platforms such as the government, corporations, organizations, agencies, consumers. Um, and then your supply chain partners, consumers and vendors, they want to make sure that these are secure transactions. Nobody wants a check anymore. Uh, so you need to make sure that, you know, you can transact just like larger companies. Uh, also saves you time and energy and headache. And they also want, as your, far as your supply chain partners, quality products and services. They want to make sure that they've aligned with someone that is doing what they said they was going to do. Um, uh, when they said, as well as providing that quality product or service. The last element is funding. All of this leads to funding. Funding, we did the e-commerce, people selling, but sometimes you need some additional funding. That e-commerce platform is going to justify. Uh, it has reports, uh, 
has all your uh, products and services, uh, reports on how well those products and services are selling, uh, your accounts payable versus receivables, um, all of that uh, in an e-commerce solution. Uh, and so all roads will lead to funding. Funding can be accomplished, one, by bootstrapping, selling, and growing your business just from, you know, without loans and additional outside uh, uh, support. Uh, there are loans uh, from financial institutions. There's also alternative lending, uh, term loans, business line of credit, equipment loans, invoice financing, merchant cash advance. Um, you just want to be careful and understand interest rates on all of this. Uh, sometimes um, the alternative lending uh, see is uh, uh, higher than what it should be. Uh, so you definitely want to read all the fine print. Uh, also check the reviews on anyone that you are uh, going to be uh, uh, working with as far as financial institutions to ensure um, that they're going to be an honest partner uh, in helping you with uh, stabilizing and startup stabilization and growing your business. Lastly, venture capitalists, they're out there. Uh, it's people, uh, groups, organizations um, that want to uh, provide private funding um, because you might show potential uh, with your product or service and you're in need of some funding to uh, start, stabilize, or grow your business. Uh, so that's another way of funding your business. They are going to ask for that pitch deck. Uh, their, your business pitch deck is going to be different than your funding pitch deck, uh, and that's okay. Uh, what we do recommend is with your funding pitch deck, um, you're going to state your problem, the audience, the solution, and the funding request. How much are you asking for? And then you want to make sure, too, that this, these presentations for funding uh, are secure, maybe on a subdomain on your website uh, with a password. So only those that uh, need to see that um, would see that type of information about your business. So again, your digital footprint roadmap, uh, it's about global trade. Even if you're just trading in your local community, that's still considered global trade uh, because you're a part of the global audience. You have branding, creating the digital footprint, creating the press and media kit so people know who you are and can understand the products and services that you provide. Um, your e-commerce, import-export uh, platforms, you have to decide, um, you know, your customer segments, uh, the channels in which they transact, uh, and then determine which e-commerce platform or multiple e-commerce platforms might be best for you, depending on your products and services. And lastly, funding. Funding is very important, whether it's bootstrap, loans, or uh, alternative uh, funding, uh, lending, uh, as well as uh, uh, working with the venture capitalists. Uh, they're going to want all of this, uh, all the elements before to flow into a presentation so they can make a decision on whether you are worthy of their funding, their capital, uh, their loans, etc. Remember when you go to a bank, credit is a big part of it. So if credit is not in order, uh, you want to make sure that you're working on getting your credit in order and bootstrapping will probably be the best way to fund uh, your uh, the launch of your product, service, or business. So, who are we? We're Go Journey, making your mission possible. Uh, we offer marketplace services in which we could help you uh, with uh, both business and digital uh, services and development. You see, my assistant uh, is uh, also showing you who we are as a company. Uh, we are located uh, in West Virginia, in Chesapeake, West Virginia, right outside of Charleston. Our 22 new business transformation goals include helping you transform. Uh, so we're looking for 100 companies to engage with this year um, to help them transform their business via digital cloud and e-commerce services. And so if you're interested, again, my name is Melissa Hill. I am the founder and CEO of Go Journey Incorporated where we are making mission possible for corporations, agencies, organizations, and individuals and families like yours. And we look forward to serving you. We've served for 30 years so far, operations, management, and consulting. We look forward to serving you. 
uh, for the startup, stabilization, and growth of your business. No business too big or too small. We want to serve to help you serve in your community. We thank you for listening to this presentation, and we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thanks and have a good day.